Well, it's funny. It started with a phone call from Dr. Harvey as I had a 103 degree fever. I was uh, laying in bed and I was like, who's this? And I answered and I said, Mike, what's up? And he's like, go. Oh. And, and we talked and he offered the job. And I said, um, I'm really sick. Uh, can I? can I call you Monday? <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah. And I, and I, and I had 103 degree fever laying in the bed and I called, I, I was screaming for my wife. She, she came running in and I was like, hey, honey, we, uh, you know, Sun Valley offered me the job. And we were both just so happy. She's like, what'd you say? And I was like, I'll talk to you Monday. <laughs> She's like, well, I was like, I'm going back to bed. Um, so, it, you know, it did start on that. It was, you know, it, it was it was fun to see that, and then I, you know, that Monday when I met with my admin at CAD and, and told them about the offer that I planned to accept it, you know, that was tough, and because I put a lot of my time, effort, and and resources into building CAD's program back up and getting them ready for varsity, and and my first thing was, you know, I want to be the ones to tell the kids. Um, I've been the one with them for 365 days, um, and, you know, and so that was kind of what we talked about, and I was able to talk with them. Uh, around three o'clock and then um, came over here for the meet the coach night um, later that afternoon and it's been welcoming ever since you know parents and kids have reached out and um, said how excited they were to have me and which has been great and then hitting the weight room with the kids has been tremendous um, they've been working hard and and they're excited for a for an exciting season I don't recall when you when you took that job with Cata. It's not it's not often where you see a coach move from one school to another right down the road within that year or a year a little yeah. fewer than a year. And um, when you took that job, I remember reading the Winston Salem Journal because I didn't really know you, but I knew initially you'd be covering JV, and I wasn't covering JV, but I wanted to find a little background. And one of the things that I read was a quote that said that you were leaving the program to move out of the area to a bigger program. Was this basically the type of program you were looking for uh at the time no um you know bishop mcginnis has you know th had 365 kids in it you know at that time you know cat has 800 860 kids i mean that's almost triple the number um i was you know fully committed to uh coach neesner and the admin team over over at cata um and when this um job when i found out it had posted and um, I had a lot of my close contacts reach out to me and ask if I, if I was going to apply, and I told a lot of them I was not because I was invested in, into CATA. Um, but after you know talking with Coach Neesner and my wife and the community members, it was it's an opportunity that I just felt like I couldn't pass up, and you know obviously it's it, it's worked out so far. Let's talk about the the program that you're inheriting two and nine last year really struggle. They, they lost like 26 seniors. So people that really read into the numbers, they, they see that's the big reason why. No, Not too many programs can rebound the following year. You lose 26 seniors. How much are you going to rely on se rising seniors like a Gavin Blackwell and Michael Gonzalez at offensive line? Um, how important are those seniors to really rely on? To um, the program? Every year the seniors are, are always important. Um, that senior leadership is kind of how the – is, you know, you know, great coaches have been around a while can tell you how good their season will be based on their senior leadership. Um, so, you know, I've already told them that I'm going to rely heavily on them. They've been in the program for for three years, and you know, I can only do so much. It, it's that senior leadership that's going to take us to the next level. Can you talk about? I, I saw your interview with, um, Jer I think it was Jeremy at the Inquirer Journal, and you were talking about your quarterback situation. I think it raised a little, a few eyebrows where it didn't seem like a full committal to Carson Black, the freshman quarterback that started last year. Decent numbers with a, a very weak or inexperienced front line, I should say. Michael Gonzalez, I, I obviously anchoring that line, but very inexperienced offensive line. Put up some decent numbers. Um, so what are your plans going forward in terms of the QB position? Um, I, you know, we're going to evaluate it. It's an ongoing eat. You know, it's just an ongoing evaluation. Um, I've not seen uh, in person any quarterback here throw. Um, for me to, you know, name a starting quarterback here and it is now March 5th would be, you know, crazy. Um, I've got to see, you know, the guys that we have coming back and they're, you know, and we've got some a good group of freshmen coming in from the from the eighth grade team. And it's just a matter of evaluating and finding the best 11 to, to – to take the field on Friday nights. You discuss for any of the folks that weren't able to come here today, your offensive philosophy in terms of how you like to move the football. 
Um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of personnel groups, you know, you know, basically 10s, 20s, and, and 21 personnel. Um, you know, we're going to have a, a lot of motions and um, a lot of different looks that are going to put us in position to be successful. I think in high school football, the, running the ball is key. Um, you know, running the ball when it's cold out, you know, you're, you've had a pretty good season. And so establishing that power run game will definitely be a uh, priority for us. And then in terms on the defensive side, um, what your, what's your look at the defense at this point? Uh, defensively, I'm sure you're yeah. not familiar with the, all the personnel as of yet, but, but what you're yeah. looking to do. Um, you know, we need to be aggressive on defense, flying to the ball. We need to, you know, pre-snap alignment is going to be huge for us. Knowing our assignments and having a, uh, having assignment-based football is going to be huge so that we know, hey, the play came through the weak side A-gap. Who's responsible for that? Why is it happening? And then again, the last part of that is – adjustments you know if this ain't working for us how are we going to adjust to fix it and so you know that's kind of my my four feet my four keys on defense you're in the weight program now but in spring ball and when you start getting into the seven and sevens what are some key um tasks that you just want to have ticked off by that time you hit june july yeah uh kind of to reestablish that that winning culture you know going to a nine is never easy um especially after this after the success that you had the, the past four years um and kind of the establishing that mentality that, all right, well, what happens when X, Y, and Z happens? When this player goes out and this player goes down, who's going to step up? So kind of that next man up and kind of reestablishing that winning culture mentality.